Hi students, today's learning target focuses on the rock cycle. We're going to be looking at what that is and the different types of rocks in the rock cycle as well as the different processes that happen in the rock cycle. So the rock cycle is actually one of the many cycles on earth. So let's recap what we mean by the cycling of matter. So in the last unit we talked about how matter like water, carbon, and nitrogen constantly are getting recycled throughout ecosystems and that these elements are important for um, life and they need to be recycled for living things. Similarly to how water and carbon are being recycled, rocks are also being recycled constantly on the surface of the earth. And the recycling of rocks helps to change the earth's surface and also helps change ecosystems and helps bring different kinds of minerals to certain ecosystems. So we're going to be talking about this, the rock cycle, in more depth today. So as I mentioned earlier, the rock cycle is a process where different rocks are formed and reformed through melting, cooling, and pressure. And this has been going on for millions and millions of years. And this right here is a, an image of the rock cycle. And we're going to be talking about the different uh, parts of the rock cycle today in more detail. First, let's talk about the different kinds of rock in the rock cycle. So there's three main types of rocks. The first type is called igneous rock. And igneous rock, as you can see in this picture, is formed when melted rocks um, or magma here kind of come out of the earth's crust and when it cools it forms a rock and we call that igneous rock and over here there's just pictures of the magma coming out forming lava and when it cools it forms this tough rock there's actually two types of igneous rock uh, the first type is called extrusive and extrusive rocks form when magma cools on the Earth's surface. And some examples of extrusive rocks are basalt and obsidian. You can see right here. The second type of igneous rock are intrusive igneous rocks. And intrusive igneous rocks, a good way to remember this is intrusive is inside. Um, it forms when magma cools inside of the Earth's surface. So it doesn't actually come out of the Earth's crust. It actually uh, bubbles and cools inside of the Earth's crust. So intrusive inside and extrusive exterior is a good way to remember it. An example of an ex intrusive igneous rock is granite, which is, this is a picture of granite. The second type of rock is called sedimentary rock. And sedimentary rocks are formed when tiny particles or rocks kind of layer on top of each other and cement together. You can see here there's many layers of rocks kind of compacted together here. Um, and here's another picture. And this is a little diagram that kind of shows you how sedimentary rocks form. And usually it forms because small pieces of weathered rock kind of settle in an area and w under lots of pressure and com what we call compaction when rocks are compacted together it eventually forms layers of rock called sediment. So there's two types of sedimentary rock. The first type is called clastic and clastic sedimentary rocks form when rocks are broken into small smaller particles called sediment and when these particles get cemented together and it forms clastic rocks. So some examples are shale, sandstone, and conglomerate. And the, the size of the particles can really range from very small and fine like in shale to very large particles like in conglomerate here you can see. The second type of sedimentary rock is called non-clastic sedimentary rock. And these types of rocks form when minerals crystallize in the ocean. And when the crystals get cemented together, it forms non-clastic rock. And some examples are rock salt here and limestone here. And you can see that there, it does look different because of the crystallization. The third type of rock is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock forms when there's a lot of pressure as well as heat. And here is a picture of metamorphic rock. And you can see that because of extra pressure 
it has the bands of sedimentary rock but those bands are kind of wavy and that's because that this rock was put under a lot of pressure and heat and here's a diagram that kind of summarizes how metamorphic rocks are formed. So we have the yellow orange color that represents heat as well as the arrows pointing towards it which represents the pressure. So some ex there's two types of metamorphic rock. We have foliated and non-foliated. Um, foliated metamorphic rock have the minerals in the rock arranged in straight bands and you can see here we have some straight structures um, and an example is nice. This is a nice rock. Um, the non-foliated metamorphic rock are types of rock, metamorphic rock where the minerals are not arranged in bands. An example is marble. And you can see there's a big difference between the bands in nice and marble. Now, we're going to talk about the processes of the rock cycle. So those three types of rocks actually change form and depending on the forces that act upon it, um, an igneous rock can turn into a sedimentary rock and a sedimentary rock can turn into a metamorphic rock and these rocks are constantly being recycled through the different ro the rock cycle. So let's talk about the different forces that kind of help this to happen. So the first force that is very important is melting. So melting happens because of the heat from the earth and we, we learned earlier about the heat in the inner core and how it travels through the mantle and also through the crust and um, when this heat actually gets near the crust it will melt some of the rocks down and make what's called magma and so we have melting here. Now when the magma pushes out through the crust and cools, it actually hardens into igneous rock, right? We call that process crystallization. Um, and so you see here, crystallization of magma. Now, sometimes the magma will actually stay inside. Remember, that's called intrusive igneous rock. If it comes out, we call that extrusive igneous rock. Um, the next force is called weathering. And so we find weathering right here. Basically what weathering is, is it's any act that kind of breaks rocks down into smaller pieces. So it could be water and rain and wind, any kind of outside force that will kind of break these rocks down is called weathering. And so you can see here weathering and erosion is happening to the igneous rock that actually bubbled out onto the surface from magma. The next um, force is called deposition. And in deposition, we have uh, basically these smaller rock particles that were weathered down from weathering, kind of rolling around and de depositing in a new area. So de deposition is when rock particles get picked up by the force of water or wind and get settled into new places. And that brings us to the next force which is called compaction and cementation. And so earlier we talked about sedimentary rock and how they form into layers and one of the reasons why they form into layers is because of this force called compaction. And basically when smaller rock particles get deposited into new areas over time more and more rocks kind of pile on top of each other and from that uh, pressure from the layers, we uh, it gets compacted or it gets pressed into these layers. We call that compaction, and that makes sedimentary rock, which has lots of layers. Now, if we take sedimentary rock that has layers and we apply lots of heat and pressure, right, we form what we call a metamorphic rock, right? And metamorphic rock is basically um, that rock that has those twisted lines and the force that forms a metamorphic rock, which is high temperatures and melting, we call that deformation. Um, and so these are the six main forces that kind of change the different rocks into different types of rocks, and you need to know them very well. So earlier I already mentioned how rocks can change form, but here are some examples. So for example, a sedimentary rock, let's say we have a sedimentary rock here formed by compaction. If we apply heat, enough heat, right, it's going to melt down back into magma. 
and that magma can burst out or it can stay in the surface under the earth and cool and that can form igneous rock. So that's an example of how sedimentary rock can become igneous rock. Um, let's go backwards. Let's see how igneous rock can become metamorphic rock. Is that well, let's see how it's possible. So the igneous rock can weather down and eventually become sedimentary rock from compaction. And that sedimentary rock can undergo heat and pressure and eventually turn into a metamorphic rock. And so as you can see from these examples, the rock cycle is continuous and the driving force behind the rock cycle is heat from the earth as well as the outside forces from water and wind that kind of breaks the rocks down, as well as the pull of gravity that brings the rocks down into uh, different areas of the earth. So finally, let's talk about how location of a rock matters in the rock cycle. So rock can become a different type of rock based on where it's located in the earth. So rocks that are near the surface of the earth, where we live, are more likely to be broken down by forces like wind and water, right? Um, rocks that are deep in the ground, down here, are more likely to get exposed to heat or undergo tons of pressure from the rocks above it. So depending on where the rock is in the earth, it will become a metamorphic rock, a sedimentary rock, or igneous rock. It really depends. But eventually, all of those minerals will get cycled through different parts of the earth. And that's really important to know.